Welcome to Martin Cordial, the show where I, uh, Professor Cordial, uh, engage in the ancient art of improvising a short story out of nowhere, off, off the, on the fly, based on your prompts and on whatever random shit we find on Wikipedia. Uh, we've done a bunch of episodes so far, we've written a few of these stories, the starts of stories, really. Uh, River of Chocolate Dreams, that was a classic, very sort of, uh, sort of, uh, sort of a rumination on a man's past. Uh, Exciting Space Ventures of Jackson Space Boots, that was great, action-packed. Gastrol was more atmospheric, I think, uh, a bit dark. Um, and we've done Cold Blooded, which was about lizards on Mars and, you know, human oppression and those sorts of things. Ram was a high school drama, uh, with a bunch of shit going on, the secrets unearthed, familial conflict, all that good shit. Now I think it's time to write a new story. Something, something fresh, something exciting. What's it gonna be? I don't know yet. Uh, Rega is in the chat. Welcome, Rega. I am alive. Martin Cordial. Man, I've been through some shit, I tell you. Uh, but Martin Cordial's back to write some shit. And what we need are some prompts. Uh, let's, uh... Alright, prompts. So, if you got some ideas on what this story should be about, chuck them in the chat. Uh, whatever you want. Characters, locations, settings... Uh, and until we got some of those, we're gonna get some random articles on Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, and Wiktionary, just to get some, some seeds, some ideas, some thoughts. So we're gonna get three random words from Wiktionary, we're gonna get three random pictures from Wikimedia Commons, and we're gonna get three random pages from Wikipedia. And so these will give us something to start with. So our first Wikipedia page is the British League season of, what is this, cricket? Le- Le- the Coventry Bees. What a great name for a sports team against the Oxford Cheaters. My God, I love these names. The Swindon Robins, the Reading Racers, the Bradford Dukes. Okay, so this is uh, a motorcycle speedway team. Okay. So these are motorcycle races called, I suppose Cheetahs is, is a good name for a motorcycle team. Bees, I don't know. I don't think bees are known for their speed. But maybe in the story we'll write, we will discover the true, the true meaning of haste, as far as bees are concerned. Uh, and we've got the Trinity Church of England High School. Uh, Trinity's always a good concept. Uh, Holy Ghost, the Son, the Father, all of that, that's, that's, that, that's quality. Uh, faith in the city, value in the people, excellence in education was their motto. It's almost as though that they have a motto made up of three parts. Each part having three words, except for the first one. That's a bit of a fuck up. Uh, World Wrestling Championships. Alright, we've got a lot of sport happening. We've got a lot of competition. That's exciting. Uh, I see we got some more people on the chat. Welcome, welcome. Give us some prompts. We're going to write a story. Give us some ideas, characters, whatever you want this story to be about, and we'll write it. Uh, Alright, so the Wikimedia pages we've got. We've got this fellow, Secretary Thomas E. Perez, the United States Secretary of Labor. Good to see that the uh, Labor Secretary has his Twitter handle up there promote his Insta, get some hashtags going, because this, this man, Thomas, he's a, he's a cutting edge man. He's on, the, he's on the cutting edge of technology, and he knows what's what. Just because he's in government doesn't mean he's a fusty old bloke. He is on the cutting edge. He's probably live streaming improvised short stories in his spare time as well, because he's an innovative leader. Hashtag innovative leader. So, so far, we've got sports teams, we've got racing, we've got wrestling, we've got a very innovative young man giving a PowerPoint presentation. These are some great things to start with. We've also got uh, this charming pair, uh, one of whom is, I suppose, a visual editor. They're in an office space. This fellow's looking a bit perturbed, (laughs) I feel. Uh, It looks like this uh, photo is from a Wikipedia event, uh, Making Wikipedia Better, Wikimania 2012. 
interesting couple of people. I wonder what their relationship is. Did they just meet? Are they friends? Do they have something going on? Uh, she's wearing a Wiki, Wikimedia t-shirt. Uh, so they've come together at this event to make Wikipedia better. I wonder how they went. Uh, we've got this church building in Oregon. Uh, rainbow flag on the church. Uh, love is love, Black Lives Matter, a bunch of progressive issues being taken up by this old church. Interesting clash of values there. Oh, so many good ideas here. All right, so now the three Wiktionary words. We got mitofusion, which is mitochondrial fusion. So mitochondria is, of course, the powerhouse of the house of the cell, as we all know. Uh, and fusion is the coming together of things. So my guess, mitofusion, the bringing together of things that have energy, surely that's got to result in even more energy. Surely. A doubling of energy. A, a, a squaring of energy. Uh, maybe that's what happens at a wrestling championship. When two wrestlers clash together, these mitotic, energetic forces coming together, maybe that fuses to create more energy. So here's, here's an idea. So our story is set at a wrestling event. Um, but this is not just wrestling, this is speed wrestling. Okay, so the wrestling champion, uh, the, the Coventry B, as he's called, against the Oxford Cheetah, are these, are these renowned wrestlers who are, who are clashing together. Um, and, um, and they clash together with such force and power that they cause mitofusion. And these two wrestlers combine into an uber wrestler maybe there's like a superhero thing maybe there's a superhero origin story right so we've got these two intense uh passionate powerful wrestlers who are in competition and they hate each other maybe they or they're rivals at least but they fuse into something far more powerful than either of them could have imagined maybe there's like a dragon ball z sort of thing our next word is man trap uh, which is, I suppose, something that traps a man. I think Mantrap would be a good name for a wrestler. Uh, we could perhaps have a female wrestler called Mantrap who's known for her uh, savage uh, headlocks and full Nelsons, and I don't know the terminology, but, but maybe a female wrestler who's known for her ability to uh, defeat male wrestlers through her through her forbidden techniques. Maybe she's one of the wrestlers who combines into this mitofusic wrestler. Uh, we have Easternization as our final prompt. Uh, something becoming Eastern, I suppose? What, what, what exactly does Easternization mean? The process of Easternizing. Uh, would that mean like culturally Eastern or like politically Eastern or geographically Eastern? If I walk East, am I Easternizing? How does this tie into the Easter Bunny? All sorts of questions raised by these prompts. Okay, so I think we've got a lot to work with. Um... What do we reckon in the chat, people? Do we reckon we want to write a story about wrestlers who combine into some mitofusic superhero? I think that's a good idea. So, uh, we will have the title of Mitofusion for now, uh, and we'll reserve the right to change that later. Um, so... Uh, I think we need, to have any kind of drama here, we need to establish the relationship between these two wrestlers. Um, so, I, I think the Oxford B is a way too funny to not use, so, um, let's, let's have the first wrestler be called Oxton, uh, Ox, Oxton B Bees, Beesberry, um, and the other wrestler whose, I think, like, wrestling name would be, uh, the Man Trap, uh, but, but she probably needs, oh, okay, so, so they've got real names and wrestler names, I think Oxton Beesbury, um, his name should be the Hornet, um, and it's just, like, this joke that a bee is different to a hornet, but they call him the Hornet anyway, or just sort of a weird etym entomological, etymological mishap, um, where he's just sort of got a nickname that's kind of wrong. Um, and for Mantrap, I think her name should be Cornelia, F uh, 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 Cornelia Fulstrom. What's a f I'm pretty sure there is an actual word, something near Fulstrom. Uh, let's look up what Fulstrom actually means. Uh, a frostrum is the portion of a solid, normally a cone or period, that lies between one or two parallel planes cutting it. Uh, 
Okay. Well, it's a good word regardless. Um, so mitofusion uh, is about the clash of Oxton Beesbury and Cornelia Falstrom. Um, so I think the right setting... So, so, so we could just use exposition. We could, like, open on a wrestling stadium where this fight is about to take place between Oxton Beesbury and Cornelia Felstrom, and then we could just use some exposition to say, like, hey, this is what their rivalry is, this is what their relationship is. Um, we could maybe have, like, a wrestling announcer, like a Don King character, uh, describing uh, what their relationship is and what their history is. Uh, but there's probably a better way we can do that, can't we? I mean, maybe we need, like, a POV character. Because um, I don't think we should see this story from the point of view of the Hornet and the Mantrap. Because I think these two are, are, are really uh, upper-tier supernatural entities, or they will shortly become such. Uh, so maybe we should have the brother of Cornelia, or the, or, or the brother of Oxton, or, or a sibling, or a family member, or a friend of one of these people, who's emotionally involved with what's happening, but who isn't one of those characters. Or, or the trainer, maybe. The trainer could be good. All right, so, so maybe we have like a family member of one of these wrestlers sitting with the trainer, and so they'll provide some sort of commentary on what's going on. Um, so... So, uh, the, the anticipation was palpable. A buzz in the air. Of course, buzz, uh, buzz evokes Oxton Beesbury, the Hornet. Uh, maybe we can reuse the idea of a buzz later on. Um, uh, an anxious, uh, texture... To the air. A hundred... How many people are in this stadium? Like, uh... 30,000? Is that reasonable? 30,000 people. 30,000 people restless in their seats. Um... So, so we're describing the atmosphere of the stadium here. Um, and we're trying to get the reader emotionally involved with the excitement and what's going to happen next before we've actually done anything. The anticipation was palpable. An anxious texture. Um, anxious? A, 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 a bubbling, rising, churning. Um, uh, we want to get that sort of sense. An anxious texture to the air. 30,000 people restless in their seats. Um, restless in their seats. The pre-show... Entertainment served. The pre-show entertainment was was exciting enough. So so here's how we're going to make this upcoming wrestling fight look even more exciting by describing a really exciting sounding entertainment pre-show entertainment. So that in comparison, uh, this wrestling is said to be even greater. So the pre-show entertainment was exciting enough. Uh, Twelve. Um, Twelve blindfolded, twelve blindfolded, um, uh, motorcycle riders, um, twelve blindfolded motorcycle riders, um, uh, defeated a, uh, twelve blindfolded mo motorcycle riders, uh, performed performed a uh, triple quadruple quadruple back flips through uh, flaming um, through flaming hoops to the tune of um, <laughs> what's a good over the top uh, to the tune of um, the Space Jam Grimbly Remix. Look it up on YouTube. Um, and yet the crowd was unsated. Nothing would satisfy the weeks of hype. Nothing would satisfy the weeks of hype 
but for the competition that was promised. A clash before half the world between Oxton, the Hornet Beesbury, uh, and Cornelia Mantrap Falstrom. The anticipation was palpable. bubbling, rising texture to the air. 30,000 people restless in their seats. The pre-show entertainment was exciting enough. 12 blindfolded motorcycle riders performed quadruple black quadruple backflips through flaming hoops to the tune of the Space Jam Grimbley remix, and yet the crowd was unsated. Nothing could satisfy the weeks of hype but for the competition that was promised. A clash before half the world between Oxton, the Hornet, Beesbury, and Cornelia, Mantrap, Falstrom. So that's the vibe in the setting. I think we need uh, to introduce our character and how they're connected. Um, so who's our character? Who's our POV protagonist who has some relationship with one of the wrestlers? Um, we could have uh, a younger sibling, I think, is an obvious choice. So, uh, let's have a younger sibling called, um, called, uh, let's get some random prompts to decide. So, let's get some random articles. What's a good name to use? Gyor, uh, Gyor in Hungary. Arpad Lampik. Gino Bella Gustav. Gustav could work. G oh, I like Gino, actually. Gino with a J. Um, Tidal Park. Pilamidu. Pilamidu is a place in uh, Coimbatore, which is in India. Uh, People's Guardian, Bhatia. You know, let's go with G Gino. Gino? Geno. Gino. Um, Jinu could hardly Jinu could hardly bear the pressure. Um Jinu could hardly bear the pressure. In the um uh in the locker well, where's the place before the fight where Jinu and his sister Cornelia would be talking? Like, it probably wouldn't be the locker room. Oh, no, maybe it would be a locker room. In the locker room, um, Cornelia was so relaxed, you would have thought she was the spectator and Jinu the wrestler. Jinu could hardly bear the pressure. In the locker room, Cornelia was so relaxed that you would have thought she was the spectator and Jinu the wrestler. All Jinu could imagine was all the ways things could go wrong. He knew Cornelia had trained... She knew. He knew Cornelia had trained all her life... Um, For this sport. Trained all her life at this sport. She had... She had dozens of... Um, she had dozens of national... National ranked victories under her prestigious belt. I don't know if we're... Um, prestigious belt. Um, she had overcome, she had overcome impossible odds before. Um, Jinu could hardly bear the pressure. In the locker room, Cornelia was so relaxed you would have thought she was the spectator, and Jinu the wrestler. All Jinu could imagine was all the ways things could go wrong. 
He knew Cornelia had trained all her life at this sport. She had dozens of national ranked victories under her prestigious belt. She had overcome impossible odds again and again. Always with her unflappable confidence. Um, and, and easy smile. Yeah. Um, she'd overcome impossible odds again and again. And never... Her confidence seemed unshakable. Um... Don't be so worried, little brother. Don't be so worried, little brother, she told him. Little brother, she told him. Um, uh, a slab of her arm. Don't be so worried, little brother, she told him. The slab of her arm draped round his neck. I've fought worse than the, I fought worse than the hornet. I can bear a little sting. I can bear a little sting. Unlike you. I can bear a little sting, she grinned. Unlike you. Ginu reddened at the tease. Um, back home in, we'll decide later, uh, Ginu had, uh, had been infamously Afraid of bees, um, infamously fearful of, infamously fearful of bees. Uh, he had once climbed a tree to escape. Um, he had once climbed. All right, so, so, so what should be the family home of Genu and Cornelia Falstrom? What's the... We, we want to we wanna place that evokes uh, maybe like, you know, a simple, safe, positive life. I think this is a positive uh, childhood home that Genu and Cornelia have, and they are now very far from that place. They, not, they are no longer in Kansas. Maybe we can just say it's Kansas. Maybe, maybe Cornelia and Genu grew up in Kansas. Back home... Back home in Kansas, Genu had been Genu had been terrified. Genu had been terrified of the bees that made hives in the fruit trees each spring. Um Yeah, Rega suggests that Genu is allergic. I'll tell you what would be a nice twist. What if Genu was terrified, 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 but not allergic, while um, Cornelia was unafraid but allergic? I think that would be an interesting uh, little contradiction. Um, Genu reddened at the teeth. Like, like maybe, maybe Cornelia has just never been stung. Like Cornelia's fearless around bees, um, and maybe she's, and, and maybe even if she did get, well, no, maybe Cornelia has been stung and she was allergic, but like she survived and you know the allergy didn't kill her, it wasn't that bad or anything. Um, and Genu's been stung, but he's not, or maybe Genu's never been stung, and he's terrified anyway. Maybe Genu is terrified because he saw the allergic reaction that Cornelia had to a bee sting. 
because I think that's that's the relationship that's going on here is that Jinu uh, sort of feels the emotional burden of Cornelia's um, the danger that she puts herself in and, and her struggles and Jinu feels all of the anxiety that he feels Cornelia should be feeling um, and and that applies to the bee sting as well Jinu is afraid for Cornelia perhaps maybe that's the dynamic um so Jinu reddened at the teas back home in Kansas Jinu had been terrified of the bees that made hives in the fruit trees each spring um he still remembered when Cornelia had been stung on the nose and her whole face puffed up like um like uh, baking bread puffed up like home baked bread like you know how you know baking bread and it rises and expands like that he still remembered when Cornelia had been stung on the nose and her whole face puffed up like home baked bread little eight year old Nelia. So maybe her nickname is Nelia. Little eight-year-old Nelia had almost um, little eight-year-old Nelia was almost unable to breathe from the uh, is it anaphylaxis? Anaphylactic uh from the anaphylactic reaction. Yet she chortled. Yet she chortled through her half-closed windpipe at Genu's terrified efforts to um, to get help. Um, Jinu Jinu was never actually stung by a bee but he was uh but he was but but the slightest buzzing sound would remind him of uh of the, the the impact that it had on Cornelia would remind him of would remind him of little Nelia's puffed up face and wheezing breath, something like that. Uh welcome midget NZ to the chat. Welcome Fairy Queen. Uh, Hadas suggests shock, anaphylactic shock. It, 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 is anaphylactic shock something more specific, though? Um, if we look up anaphylactic shock, um, a severe allergic reaction can cause anaphylactic shock. Uh, anaphylactic shock, blood pressure drops, uh, yeah, okay. Sweet. So, anaphylactic shock, I think, is a good description of that, yeah. Uh, so, don't be so worried, little brother, she told him, a slab of her arm draped around his neck. I've fought worse than the hornet. I can bear a little sting, she grinned, unlike you. Jinu reddened at the tease. Back home in Kansas, Jinu had been terrified of the bees that made hives in fruit trees each spring. He still remembered when Cornelia had been stung on the nose and her whole face puffed up like... like Mama's home-baked bread. Little eight-year-old Nelia was almost unable to breathe from the anaphylactic shock. No, he's breath wrong. Yet she chortled through a half-closed windpipe at Jinu's terrified efforts to get help. Jinu was never actually Jinu was never actually stung by a bee but forever after but forever after the slightest buzzing sound would remind him 
of Nelia's puffed up face and wheezing and wheezing breath. Sometimes Genu felt it was his lot to be afraid for to be afraid on behalf of his fearless sister. Today more than ever. All right, I think that's good. I think that is actually good. So, so, so we've been introduced to the atmosphere at the arena, at the show. Uh, we've been introduced to Genu and uh, the brother of Cornelia uh, and their personality. Genu is very sort of anxious. Cornelia very brave. Uh, we know a little bit about their past growing up uh, in Kansas together. I think this is a pretty good start. Uh, welcome to High on the Cleave in the chat. Welcome to Sinigan. Great to have you all here. Uh, so let's do a read through of what I've got so far. So we're writing a story called Mitofusion. Uh, and this is a story about two wrestlers and the clash that uh, is about to happen. So the wrestlers are Oxton Beesbury, the Hornet, and Cornelia Falstrom, the Man Trap. Uh, and it starts, the anticipation was palpable. A bubbling, rising texture to the air. 30,000 people were restless in their seats. The pre-show entertainment was exciting enough. Twelve blindfolded motorcycle riders performed quadruple backflips through flaming hoops to the tune of the Space Jam Grimbly remix. Um, maybe we should just say to the tune of Space Jam. I think the Grimbly remix is too obscure a... Um, too obscure a reference to inflict on the uh, second sentence. And yet the crowd was unsated. Nothing would satisfy the weeks of hype but for the competition that was promised. A clash before half the world between Oxton, the Hornet, Beesbury, and Cornelia, Mantrap, Falstrom. Genu could hardly bear the pressure. In the locker room, Cornelia was so relaxed you would have thought she was the spectator, and Genu the wrestler. All Genu could imagine was all the ways things could go wrong. He knew Cornelia had trained all her life at this sport. She had dozens of national-ranked victories under her prestigious belt. She had overcome impossible odds again and again. Her confidence seemed unshakable. Don't so and her confidence seemed unshakable. Don't be so worried, little brother, she told him, the slab of her arm draped around his neck. I've fought worse than the Hornet. I can bear a little sting, she grinned, unlike you. Genu reddened at the teas. Back home in Kansas, Genu had been terrified of the bees that made hives in the fruit trees each spring. He remembered when little Cornelia had been stung on the nose, and her whole face puffed up like Mama's home-baked bread. Little eight-year-old Nelia was almost unable to breathe from the anaphylactic shock. We could almost say, just say anaphylaxis. Yet she chortled through a half-closed windpipe at Genu's terrified efforts to get help. Genu was never... Genu never got... Genu never got stung by a bee, but forever after, the slightest buzzing sound would remind him of Nelia's puff. But, but forever after, when he heard buzzing, when he heard buzzing, he would see Nelia's puffed up face and wheezing breath. Sometimes Genu felt it was his lot to be afraid on behalf of his fearless sister, today more than ever. So now we'll return to the arena uh, and explore the fight that's about to happen. So, on the giant um, on the giant screen hung from hung from the stadium roof from the stadium roof um, the announcer. So I think we need a character who uh, who represents like sort of the wrestling establishment and you know i imagine there's a lot of money going into this fight i imagine there's a lot of uh corporate business interests happening here and maybe that plays a role in the plot uh so we need a character to represent that and i think don king is inex inescapably the comparison um but but we want someone colorful and loud and greedy and larger than life i think um, or, you know, maybe we can do something different. Maybe we could do someone who's just weirdly quiet and understated and... Well, that, well, that wouldn't really fit the announcer role, would it? Um, so on a giant screen hung from... All right, well, we, well, we need a name for this character. So let's uh, go through some random Wikipedia articles to try and... P 
pick something. So let's open three random articles and Summit Sports was a sports-oriented channel on New Zealand. Uh, not really a lot of names here to use. RAF Throwly it was an RAF thing. Uh, Sop with Pup, Sop with Camel, and Sop with Snipe. I think those are the names of aircraft. Uh, Brookfield Renewable Partners. Uh, key people, Sashen Shah and Richard Legault. Uh, how about Sashen Legault? How about that? How about that as a name? Uh, Sashen Legault. Oh, that is a spicy name. Uh, so I think someone who is a, is a, is a little bit uh, European, perhaps, someone with an accent, someone who's got, um, oh damn, uh, Midget New Zealand has a uh, Dollarman T. Buckberry as a name. That is powerful. Uh, that's a good name. Uh, Dollarman... Dolomon T. Buckbury. We've already used um, Beesbury, so I don't know about the the bury suffix. Um, and we've already we've already used Tun, so Buckton. What what's um, Buckshire? Uh, wait, wait, let's not rip off the Hobbit entirely. How should we play up that name? Dolomon T. Um, Buckford. <laughs> that's that's a good name. Um, I like Sarshan Legault, although I suppose uh, Sarshan Legault might be an appropriate name for a different character, because Dollar Man fits the, um, fits the announcer role better, I think. On the giant screen hung from the stadium roof, um, uh, on the giant screen hung from the stadium roof, um, A great glittering, um, on the giant screen, great white teeth, um, uh, I, I, I want the feeling of these, the, the, these great teeth, like, expanding and, like, and, like, covering the screen, filling the screen, um, the giant screen hung from the stadium roof um, was filled with the... Yeah, it's a, it, there's a better way to say this, but... The, uh, from the stadium roof... From the stadium roof... A giant screen... And I'd also like to communicate that this screen is bright and colourful and intense and loud, the way those events are. From the stadium roof, a giant screen. Um, it, it's blazing. A giant screen blazed with, um... From the stadium roof, a giant screen blazed with colourful graphics. Um with the colourful graphics of the um, Intercontinental Wrestling uh, Institute. What's a good name for for this wrestling competition? Like, I, I suppose it's like the WWE. Although I think in this world, I think this wrestling is meant to be more of a, of an actual competitive sport uh, or at least people sort of believe that it's like an actual competition as opposed to WWE as more of a performance thing. Um, uh, Synergen suggests that it could be holographic. That's a cool idea. So this could be like a uh, near-future world um, where their technology is a little bit further on. And I suspect that we're going to get a bit supernatural with the, uh, mitophusic reaction of the Hornet and the Mantrap anyway. So yeah, let's put it a little bit in the future to make some of the more supernatural stuff a bit more, a bit more, uh, fitting. So, a giant, a giant holographic screen blazed with the colourful graphics of the intercontinental wrestling there's a better word for institute um wh wh what's a word for institute that really means 
uh, something uh, something less corporate and less understated and more of a more of a all right let's let's go to thesaurus uh, institute um con convention estab establishment is sort of closer to what I'm thinking uh and enterprise is kind of interesting um corporation firm house yeah not quite what i want um i'm thinking less of like a corporate thing and more of like a uh like a broader cultural institution like a broader sense of like a um i mean like a a, a sport it's a it's a the games Oh yeah, the, the games, like the Olympic Games Association, uh, individual sporting event, competition, tournament. Yeah, I think tournament is maybe closer. Um, contest. The contest, the match, the series. Series is all right. Uh, league. Yeah, no, league is... All right, the Intercontinental Wrestling League. How do you spell league? Uh, league. The the IWL, the Intercontinental Wrestling League. All right, I think that works. From the stadium roof, a giant holographic screen blazed with the colorful graphics of the Intercontinental Wrestling League before giving way... Before giving way to the... To the giant white... Teeth of Dolomon, Dolomon, Dolomon. I, th I think we should probably <laughs> maybe tweak this so it's not as Dolomain. Uh, so it's not as obviously Dolomain. I don't know. Uh, Dolomon T. Buckford. White teeth of Dolomon T. Buckford. Um, he's booming. He's his voice boomed from the his voice boomed from the speakers um his voice boomed from the speakers his voice boomed across the great open air stadium His voice boomed across the great open air stadium. Uh, so I think we want him to hype the event and then we can get on with the fight, I think. So from the stadium roof, a giant holographic screen blazed with the colorful graphics of the Intercontinental Wrestling League before giving way to the giant white teeth of Dolomon T. Buckford. His voice boomed across the open air stadium ladies and gentlemen um uh how do these people talk <laughs> ladies and gentlemen are you ready for the greatest um oh damn synergen in the chat suggests bleached porcelain veneers for teeth that is that is spicy that is um evocative Bleached porcelain veneers. I think veneer is probably a good word for Dolomon T. Buckford because it implies a certain uh, kind of fakeness, I think. Um, yeah, bleached porcelain veneers. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the greatest... for the greatest uh, competition in the history... in the history of the world competition in the history of the world ladies and gentlemen are you ready for the greatest competition in the history of the world um, two champions are gathered here today to perform the most ancient the most ancient, most, uh, 
like I'm trying to evoke some sort of almost like religious, like metaphysical words where this guy's like hyping up the stature of this event. The most ancient, most celebrated, most celebrated, um, uh, uh, something ritualistic, something like, uh, something primal. Two champions are gathered here today to perform the ancient art of violence for your very entertainment. Here in the, um, oh, it's got to be something branded, doesn't it? Here in the, um, in the Vari in the Varicom Coca Pepsi Co Stadium. Here in the Variacom Kokyo Pepsi Co Stadium. Uh this veritable cathedral this veritable cathedral of uh, mass entertainment. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we shall... We shall witness the culmination of 200 years of, uh, of 300 years of... of 800 years of, uh... of wrestling, um... <laughs> wrestling science. No. Uh, he, all right, so his voice boomed across the great open-air stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the greatest competition in the history of the world? Two champions are gathered here today to perform the ancient art of violence for your entertainment. Here in the Variacom Coke Coco Pepsi Co Stadium, this veritable cathedral of mass entertainment shall be witness... Uh shall be witness to the culmination of, uh, yeah, three millennia midget. Because, yeah, wrestling is ancient, isn't it? The Romans were doing that shit. The culmination of 3,000 years of wrestling. Uh, what's a good ridiculous word to describe the legacy of wrestling? The, um, the culmination of 3,000 years of wrestling art and science. I, I don't know, something that feels really hyped. Some better than that. Shall be witness to the culmination of 3,000 years of wrestling, art, and science. Splendor. Yeah, splendor is something that we want to capture here. Um, yeah, splendor, sash, and buzz. Yeah, we've sort of talked about buzzing already, haven't we? Um, here, in the Variacom Coco Pepsi Co Stadium, this veritable cathedral of mass entertainment shall be witness to the culmination of 3,000 years of wrestling science. Uh, wrestling, art, and science. Um, today... Today, a... Today, a hero will... Today, a hero will rise to the stature, to the stature of God. That's too direct. Today, a hero will, will rise, uh, yeah, in the splendor of Variacom. Yeah, we, we, we can have the Coco PepsiCo or one of the sponsors, um, take the role of, 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 of God in this, um, in this church, perhaps. Uh, perhaps they are the deity that's being worshipped, but I think Dolom and T. Buckford would as much like to worship the god, the god of wrestling, uh, in which he is, of course, uh, financially invested. I suspect today a hero will will rise beyond beyond the stature beyond the stature of human to achieve. To win a prize that even uh, that even gods would tremble to behold. Uh, 
the uh, IWL Wrestling Grand. Uh, all right. So, what's a good object that should represent the trophy? I mean, I know a belt is traditional. Um, I think something slightly different to a belt might be cool. Something for um, the combined Hornet Man Trap to wear at the end of this fight. The wrestling grand, uh, and I, I do like the religious imagery. Um, chalice. Chalice. That'll work. The IWL Wrestling Grand Supreme Chalice. I'm getting a bit of like a Ark of the Covenant vibe here. Uh, Midget suggests the old ones. Yeah, we could get a bit Lovecraftian later. Um, gore bearers, four bearers, yeah. All right, we got some good ideas in the chat. Um, all right, so today a hero will rise beyond the statue of human to win a prize that even gods would tremble to behold. The IWL Wrestling Grand Supreme Chalice of Victory. Ooh, Crystal Chalice. I like that. Thank you, Sinigan. Um, the Grand Supreme Crystal Chalice of Victory. Um, we probably could tone things down a little bit, um, cause, cause, cause we're, we're, we're being like very like over the top and cartoony, uh, and ridiculous with all the names and things, which I'm having fun with, but I wonder what the tone of this would be like if it was slightly more grounded. Um, it might feel even more sort of impactful perhaps if it was a little bit less ridiculous. Uh, but until now I'm, I'm having too much fun with the Variacom Coco Pepsi Co Stadium. The IWL Wrestling Grand Supreme Crystal Chalice of Victory. Uh, so, um, um, a spotlight, a spotlight descends, uh, a, a spotlight, the stadium goes dark, and a lone spotlight from above, above, from above, as though from the heavens. Uh, and, a, and a lone spotlight from above illuminates um, four young women uh, wheeling out a a uh, a an elaborate an, an ornate an ornate cart. I don't know. I don't know what the right object is. Wheeling out an ornate cart glittering with um with with gold and jewels um upon the cart rests the chalice itself uh an object of such uh an object of such such power, weight, import, an object of, uh, an object of divine repute, perhaps. Uh, Hadass is leaving, alas, see, see you, fairy queen, thanks for taking part, enjoy being an adult. Uh, Midget suggests ornate conveyance. Uh, Conveyance is a dope word, but I don't know if it conve if it conveys uh, the kind of object that that we're talking about. Um, and and I say four young women because that is sort of the vibe of wrestling, isn't it? I suppose we could uh, change it up um, and have it sort of like um, four uh, four young people in very small pants <laughs> wheeling out. Uh, an ornate cart glittering with gold and jewels. Uh, what I'm really enjoying here is the uh, mashup of the sort of like religious serious imagery with the ridiculousness of wrestling corporate um, energy. I, I think that's a lot of fun. The stadium goes dark and a lone spotlight from above illuminates four young people in very small pants wheeling out an ornate cart glittering with gold and jewels. Upon the cart rests the chalice itself, an object of some divine repute. Um, Genu, because of course we do have a protagonist here. Genu, uh, he is 
gasps and whispers all around him. Jinu hears gasps and whispers all around him. Uh, but his, but, um, but his eyes are locked not to the chalice, but to the, um, but to the stadium entrance below, where he knows his sister is waiting for the fight of her life. The holograph, the holograph jeers, well not jeers, the holograph um, poses for the crowd, um, slamming head-sized fist into his hand, into his hand, um, yellow and black muscles ripple threateningly. I think that's kind of a bad description, but we'll come back to it later. So Buckford says, the reigning champion, king of wrestling, is the deadly, the unstoppable hornet, Oxton Beesbury. Um... Um, I think, I think we could develop some, like, mythos around, like, who the Hornet is and how we might relate to, like, a hive. Um, I think Loki, the chat, might have fucked up. So maybe we'll end it there. Alright, so it looks like the stream dropped out for a moment. It's been an hour anyway. I think we'll wrap up, uh, just when things were getting interesting. But uh, we'll have to continue another time. Thank you so much for participating in this uh, episode of Modern Cordial. Uh, we will add the names of all who participated. So Mitofusion by Martin Cordial with... So we have Fairy Queen who goes by Hadass. And we have Rega and we have Midget and we have Synogen. If you want a different name... If you want your real name or whatever, uh, let us know and we'll add it instead. Uh, Synergen, Midget, Fairy Queen. Uh, was there anyone else in the chat? Hi on the cleave. On the cleave. Um, I think that's everyone. Okay, so before we finish, we'll do one more reading of what we've got. Mitofusion. The anticipation was palpable, a, buzzling, a bubbling, rising texture to the air. 30,000 people were restless in their seats. The pre-show entertainment was exciting enough. Twelve blindfolded motorcycle riders performed quadruple backflips through flaming hoops to the tune of Space Jam, and yet the crowd was unsated. Nothing would satisfy the weeks of hype but for the competition that was promised. A clash before half the world between Oxton the Hornet Beesbury and Cornelia Mantrap Fulstrom. Genu could hardly bear the pressure. In the locker room, Cornelia was so relaxed you would have thought she was the spectator, and Genu the wrestler. All Genu could imagine was all the ways things could go wrong. He knew Cornelia had trained all her life at this sport. She had dozens of national ranked victories under her prestigious belt. She had overcome impossible odds again and again, and her confidence seemed unshakable. Don't be so worried, little brother, she told him, the slab of her arm draped round his neck. I've fought worse than the hornet. I can bear a little sting. She grinned, unlike you. Jinu reddened at the tease. Back home in Kansas, Jinu had been terrified of the bees that made hives in the fruit trees each spring. He still remembered when Cornelia had been stung on the nose, and her whole face puffed up like Mama's home-baked bread. Little eight-year-old Nelia was almost unable to breathe from the anaphylaxis, yet she chortled through a half-closed windpipe at Genu's terrified efforts to get help. Genu never got stung by a bee himself, but forever after, when he heard buzzing, he would see Nelia's puffed-up face and wheezing breath. Sometimes Genu felt it was his lot to be afraid on behalf of his fearless sister, today more than ever. 
From the stadium roof, a giant holographic screen <clears throat> blazed with the colourful graphics of the Intercontinental Wrestling League before giving way to the giant white teeth of Dollarman T. Buckford. His voice boomed across the great open-air stadium. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the greatest competition in the history of the world? Two champions are gathered here today to perform the ancient art of violence for your entertainment. Here in the Variacom Coco Pepsi Co Stadium, this veritable cathedral of mass entertainment shall be witness to the... We could say veritable cathedral of bloodshed, that's kind of more edgy, shall be witness to the culmination of 3,000 years of wrestling art and science. Today, a hero will rise beyond the stature of human to win a prize that even gods would tremble to behold. The IWL Coco Pepsi Co Wrestling Grand Supreme Crystal Chalice of Victory. The stadium goes dark, and a lone spotlight from above illuminates four young people in very small pants, wheeling out an ornate cart, glittering with gold and jewels. Upon the cart rests the chalice itself, an object of some divine repute. Genu hears gasps and whispers all around him, but his eyes are locked not to the chalice, but to the stadium entrance below, where he knows his sister is waiting for the fight of her life. Buckford continues, the reigning champion, king of wrestling, is the deadly, the unstoppable Hornet, Oxton Beesbury. A holograph is projected from the screen. The Hornet looks even more terrifying in holograph form. Eight feet of solid muscle, the Hornet is tattooed yellow and black from head to toe. His impenetrable black eyes have seen the end to many a great wrestler. The holograph poses for the crowd, slamming a head-sized fist into his hand. Yellow and black muscles th ripple threateningly. So I think that's a pretty cool start. Uh, I like what's happening. I like the, I like the vibe of the event with the sort of uh, religious metaphysical stuff, but also the ridiculousness of the wrestling and the corporate side. I like the relationship between Genu and Cornelia. I think the Hornet needs more work because, like, what we're planning, I think, is for these two wrestlers to fuse into one person. Uh, that's the. Uh, that's the mitofusion of the title. And I think for that to mean something, we need to characterize the Hornet more than just like a big scary bad guy. So I think we need to give the Hornet more of a personality. Uh, and then I think we need a tense, exciting fight scene. Uh, and then we have the, uh, the mitofusion itself. And I think that would be a good first chapter to this story. So again, thank you all. Uh, we're going to end the stream here. We will upload uh, it to YouTube for people to watch back later if they'd like. Uh, if you want to be notified of uh, when these streams are on, probably the best way is to follow on Twitter and turn on notifications there because, frankly, I don't know how Twitch works. Um, but, yeah, do that and have a good one. Thank you for participating. Cheers.